know how to describe it, but it's just been such a beautiful time in my life and I'm Welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be super chill. I don't even have any makeup on. I've been breaking out and I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. I don't know if it's my Clarisonic that I've been using for the last two weeks or the fact that I got hormone replacement therapy um, because my testosterone levels were really low. So I went to um, my wellness solutions to try this new bioidentical hormone replacement thing that they have going on and um, I'm gonna do a whole separate video about that and the benefits of it because it's actually quite interesting and it's all natural by the way um, so I'm trying to figure out if it's the hormones that are kicking in or if it's the Clarisonic that's making me break out and you guys probably can't tell you're probably like Ada what are you talking about but it's because I have like the ring light on and everything but I've been breaking out and this is not normal for me so Anyways, um, today's video is going to be super chill. By the way, I know you guys haven't seen Rico in so long. He needs a haircut so bad. <laughs> He's looking real crazy. If you guys follow me on Instagram and you watch my stories, you probably see Rico on the daily. But if you don't, this is my puppy who's about to be two in November. It'll be two years since I've had him in January. And maybe I'll do like a puppy update video so uh you guys can see how it's been for almost two years to have him he's freaking crazy as ever and hyper but whatever that's for another video anyways today's video is all about the fact that today um is actually my uh one year anniversary of living in this apartment and living on my own and it's been quite a journey and a journey that i am incredibly thankful and grateful for i hope that all of you get to experience living on your own at least once in a lifetime because I've grown so much emotionally and mentally as a person and I'm so grateful for this chapter in my life because I know that I'm going to be able to look back at it um, a few years from now and and just be grateful that I got to experience this because it, it really... I don't even know how to describe it, but it's just been such a beautiful time in my life and I'm so grateful for this chapter of being single. I'm so grateful for this chapter of living on my own and um, it truly is something that I wish that everyone could experience in their lifetime. I know a lot of people um, wish that they could experience this in their lifetime because typically like they'll live at home until they get married and then they get married and they have kids and they just never get this opportunity. And I know in the Latino household, it's something that's very common like your parents and your family members always try to discourage you from living on your own because it's like you can't live on your own like what are you gonna do like you need help you need somebody to always like help you and i know um it's something that is not common a lot in like suburbia and other cities in new york i feel like it's a little bit more common there they might be a little bit more accepting of it but i know in cities that are less populated like it's not common for you to like live on your own if you can stay at home with your parents so um, anyways, this has been my journey and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys nine things that I learned about living on my own um, for a year so far in New York City. I did write a blog post on this on allthingsala.com so if you guys want to go read the actual blog post you're more than welcome to but I'm basically just going to summarize what I wrote in my blog post. The first thing that I learned living on my own is that being alone is not the same as being lonely. Being alone is clearly I live alone, it's just me and my dog, that's pretty much it. But being lonely is a feeling. It's sadness stemming from isolation and abandonment and can often lead to depression if you don't address it. But being lonely and being alone is not the same thing. So I think that was one something that I really learned. And just because I'm alone doesn't mean that I'm not lonely. I think a lot of people kind of get that mixed up and it's two very different feelings. Um, and I think if you do live alone and you are starting to feel lonely, I think there's 
certain things that you can do to kind of discourage that feeling of loneliness but don't think that because you live alone you are lonely because that is far from the truth this dog is really just gonna kind of chill here as i filmed this video like i cannot with him anyways um he's usually very rowdy and wild so the fact that he's just chilling like this blows my mind this dog is a character he needs to have his own youtube channel i swear to god the second thing i learned is that balancing me time versus interacting with people and being social is definitely crucial i always knew that i was an extrovert i'm very much like that person that can walk into any room even if i don't know anybody and i can leave with like a new friend it's very easy for me to talk to strangers um i i don't have a problem with being in places where i don't know anyone because i usually always kind of figure it out like i'm definitely an extrovert but one thing i learned this year is that i'm also an introvert and as much as i like being an extrovert and being out and being social and socializing with people i need time to recharge and if i don't recharge and spend that time by myself recharging and giving myself that alone time i'm a hot mess and i'm not fun to be around so Typically, if I'm like out every single day interacting with people by day three, I'm like physically, mentally exhausted. I just want to be alone. And the fact that I live alone on my own and I get to come home and do just that is great because a lot of times when you have roommates or when you live with your family, like you want to be alone, but you still have to interact with the people that live in your household because obviously you don't want to be rude. So it's kind of hard to really be completely alone when you live with friends and family and roommates. And I just love that after a few days of being social and when I feel like I've had enough I can come back home to my own place and kind of disconnect in by my lonesome and just like recharge because I really I really need that time to recharge and I think it was something that I wasn't aware of before living on my own but also the bad thing about being an introvert is that sometimes you kind of can get caught up in that world too much and you isolate yourself a little bit too much. And so when I see that I'm naturally leaning towards to one side a little bit too much, I kind of force myself to bring the balance back. So if I see that I've been staying home consecutively a little bit more than normal, I will just force myself to go out and interact with people or just go out somewhere, take the train downtown, do something a little different, switch up my schedule so that I don't become too much of like an introvert. So the third thing I learned is decorating and the rush to make your home feel like a home. Yes, it's really important for you to decorate your space. I think that's probably my favorite thing about living on my own, the fact that I can incorporate my personal style and the things that make me happy into the decor of my own home. And I can just have my home be a reflection of me and my personal style. Now, one thing that I wish that I wouldn't have rushed was the decor process because I feel like you move in and you want to make your home feel like a home so bad. So you start buying all this crap and then like as you've been living in the home for maybe three or four months, you're like, why the hell did I buy this? Like now that I'm actually settled into my space, like this doesn't really match with the idea that I had for my home or this, this is not going to work. So you end up either giving stuff away or finding a use for it. But at the end of the day, like you just end up buying a lot of random pieces that you're just like, like, I don't even know why I bought this like for example like my dresser I wish I needed a dresser but I just wish that I would have waited a little longer to find something that I really love because it's like not my favorite thing in my room and it's a little it's not as functional as I'd like it to be so I just wish that I wouldn't have rushed the decor process I did work with an interior decorator which I can't wait to do like a home tour when I'm finally done decorating so that you guys can get to know more about Julie you guys can check out her Instagram it's at redo your room online but one of the things that was so helpful with Julie is that I was able to sit down with her and kind of share like my ideas for the space. And then she put together a PDF with like a 3D rendering of my apartment and all the things that I needed to buy and all the links were clickable. So I have been able to buy everything that she included in my interior decorating package little by little, which has been helpful. I did buy a lot of the big ticket items and can you believe that they're still in boxes? Like I still just haven't had a chance to like build my desk or like set up my little like dining nook in my living room. And it's like, I was such in a rush to do all this stuff for what? It's literally still sitting in boxes. I probably could have used that money for other things but whatever it's there i just need to kind of get it together and finish assembling this apartment my goal is to finish decorating the space by the end of the new year finish painting and hopefully be able to give you guys a um, apartment tour before i go into 2019 
Number four is always keep a spare key, two or three if possible. When I first moved in, I made two additional copies of my spare keys and I'm so thankful that I did. Those spare keys I keep in the homes of people that I trust so that if I were to get locked out or you know lose my keys or anything, I do have a spare key. And um, I'm so glad I did that because it has already come in handy. The first time I actually left my keys at WeWork for an event that I was doing, I didn't realize it until I got home at 2 a.m. that night. So I had to thank God I was able to go back to Maritza's house, which is where I keep my spare keys and go get my spare key. The second time I actually lost my key, I went to go walk Rico on a really long walk because I was out all day on set doing a shoot. And when I got home, I realized that I must have dropped my keys along the way, but I was just like so into my music and whatever I was listening to that I didn't even notice. Thank God I was able to take an Uber and go to Maritza's house and get my spare key and get into my apartment. Now I only have two spare keys and I'm freaking out because I always like to have three at all times. So I do need to make another copy of my spare keys just so that I can sleep safe at night knowing that I have options and I have copies. The fifth would be meeting your neighbors is a must. I know like we live in a society that people tend to be a little bit more like to themselves and reserves especially when they move into a new neighborhood but I can't stress the importance of getting to know your neighbors. Um, a tip that I will give you is that obviously don't give out your personal information right away when you move in but once you get to know them and you feel comfortable like exchange phone numbers because your neighbors are gonna be there to kind of help you feel a little bit more safer and not only that like when i travel it's good to know that my neighbors are kind of like looking out for me in my apartment and they always like text me if something's weird they've already saved me from so many circumstances and situations like i remember one time i left my keys on the door like i guess i was like rushing to get home and i left the keys on the door another time when i was going away on vacation i was rushing to catch my uber with all my stuff and i left the door open and they text me like hey your door's open and they were able to close the door for me thankfully like my apartment was still intact when i got back like nothing was stolen or anything but things like that, like it's so important to get to know your neighbors. At least one of the people on your floor, if you live in a building, um, the immediate neighbor next to you obviously would be great. And yeah, like I love my neighbors. I love like when they knock on my door and they share a meal. I go through my beauty items when I clean out my beauty closet, like I'm always gifting them stuff. So I just love my neighbors and I'm very thankful for that relationship that I have with them and I just want to remind you guys how important it is to like build your community and talk to your neighbors sorry I just realized that it's actually 10 tips not nine but whatever here we are so now that I figured out the correct number this is actually um, the sixth thing that I learned living on my own and it's to invite your friends over and that's something that I suck at because I feel like because my apartment is not fully decorated and done like I'm like oh I don't know if I should invite my friends over because like my apartment is not decorated and also like whenever your friends hit you up by last minute like hey what are you doing can I stop by like I get a little bit of anxiety because I'm like oh my god like my I didn't do the dishes today like I need to go do the dishes or like I didn't I'm not gonna clean the bathroom until tomorrow so the bathroom is not like as clean as it, it should be to have like visitors over so like when people want to pop in unexpectedly like it does give me a little bit of anxiety because I'm like oh my god I need to make sure everything is perfect and at the end of the day that's kind of dumb because like I'm sure my friends don't care if my apartment is Pinterest worthy or not like they're just coming to hang out with me and have a good time and I do enjoy hosting and and like having people over but I don't it's something that I don't do and it's something that I definitely want to do more of and something I'm going to challenge myself to do um this holiday season because that's like the best time to have people over to enjoy company number seven is if you're single go out out even if you don't have a reason to um you know i have been single now for three years and um in the last few months i recently started dating and i started like kind of just putting myself out there and beginning the dating process and so especially when fall and winter comes around it's so easy if you live on your own to like go into full hermit crab mode and like not leave your house and just be like netflixing all day all the time but how the hell are you gonna expect to find bae if you're you're always home and your future bae is always home like how are you guys gonna find each other so one thing that i'm challenging myself is to go out even if i don't have a reason to or an event to go to or somewhere like i just need to go out more because i need to put myself in the position to meet someone and if i'm always home that's not gonna happen and i know for sure like for me i'm not really into like online dating and dating apps i would genuinely like to meet someone through a 
mutual friend or just meet someone while I'm out, but that can't happen if I'm always home. So if you're single, go out. Find a reason to go out. Find something to do. Don't stay at home in your little hermit crab if you're trying to meet someone because unless they break into your apartment, that's the only way you're gonna meet your future bae, okay? Number eight is your phone is not your roommate. I know when you're home, you're like bored, there's nothing to do, so like you scroll through Instagram and you're just looking at what everyone else is doing and you're living vicariously through other people and then like eight hours pass by and you just spent your whole Saturday on Instagram and like no that is not okay now is the perfect time for you to get to know yourself better for you to practice those hobbies that you've always wanted to try for you to try new recipes for you to try a new workout class like you have a little bit more time on your hands now that you live alone I would say so it's like take that time to get to know yourself and find out the things that you're passionate about like don't live vicariously through people on your phone you don't have to always be on your phone your phone is not your roommate you don't have to have small talk with your phone you don't have to always be checking on your phone like your phone is not your roommate so put the phone down and get moving and do something number nine is the fact that I realized that living on my own, like I actually hate cleaning and that's okay. Like I used to beat myself up about it, especially because my mom is like OCD and a neat freak. And I'm like, how can I be her child if like I don't take after her and I don't enjoy cleaning? But the truth of the matter is that like I really don't. And it's, not, don't get me wrong, it's not that I hate cleaning because like, I just procrastinate to do it, but when I actually do do it, like when I put my gloves on and I put my bachata and my salsa and I start cleaning and like about an hour into it, I'm just like on full on cleaning mode and then I start cleaning and decluttering and organizing and before I know it, I literally just spent my entire weekend cleaning when I should use that time to be going out, right? So it's not that I hate cleaning, I guess it's just that I feel like it's kind of like a waste of time when I could be doing other things. So one of the things that I'm working on is to finish decluttering and just getting rid of a lot of stuff that I feel like I don't need because I feel like if you have clutter in your home, um, if your space is not organized, that's a lot of stagnant energy in your space and I do not. Sorry guys, my camera stopped recording so I have to record the last bit of this video. But like I was saying, I feel like the more clutter that you have in your home, the more stagnant energy you have in your home and I do not want stagnant energy in my home. I do notice that when my home is tidy, I do feel more at peace, I feel more calm and like the energy here is good so i always try to keep it tidy but i have so much going on at all times and because i work from home i feel like it's so much easier for your house to be messy because you're just constantly here all the time whereas like if you have a nine to five let's say like you clean your house and everything is in order and you have to, your nine to five like you go to work and you come back like you're not home the whole day to make a mess i don't know if that makes any sense to you guys but that's my theory so my big goal for the year is to to finish decluttering my house finish decorating it and once like all the colors gone and things are decorated and everything is supposed to be where it's at I do plan on hiring someone to come here once a month and just deep clean and then the other days I can just lightly keep up with everything and I know you guys are probably like who does she think she is like she's gonna have a housekeeper now she's gonna have someone clean her apartment Honestly, if you look at the price of paying someone to come clean your apartment for an hour or two, it literally costs the same as you going downtown for a bottomless brunch with your friends, which you have no business doing. So you know what? I'd rather save my coins instead of going downtown to get trash for the day and have someone come clean my home so I can live in a space that feels like calm and peaceful. So um, it's not that I necessarily hate cleaning. It's just that I feel like I don't want to spend my time doing that when I could be doing other things like going out on dates, living my best life, enjoying time with friends and family, etc, etc. And then the last thing that I learned living on my own um, this past year is that you need to enjoy this chapter of your life and live your best life. I feel like we live in a society that is always like, what's next what's next like you accomplish a goal and then instantly it's like okay you need to accomplish another goal you need to like always be moving on to the next thing and i feel like we don't find enough time to like be present and just enjoy what we have and be grateful and thankful where we are at in our current lives so you best believe that i am fully enjoying this chapter in my life i'm enjoying being single i'm enjoying being 28 i'm enjoying living alone i'm enjoying living in new york city i am enjoying this chapter of my life because i know there's gonna come a time in the future i do hope to get married and have kids and all of that and be successful in my career and i know there's gonna come a time in the future where i'm gonna look back 
and think about, wow, those were some good times when I was living on my own in the Bronx. But why wait until the future to look back and be like, those were some good times and not enjoy them right now and say like, these are some good times right now. So I actively try to be very present and be very grateful for this chapter in my life right now. And honestly, like I can't even begin to explain to you guys like the mental and emotional growth that I have had this past year living on my own. And I really wish that you all could experience this at least once in your lifetime and if you're married and you have kids and you know like that's out of the ballpark i just hope that my journey and me sharing my story inspires you to really like get more in tune with yourself and really get to know yourself better because at the end of the day this time of living on my own this past year, that's what it has allowed me to do. More than anything, I feel like I have gotten to know myself in a way that I didn't even think was possible. Like there's just something so beautiful about being comfortable, being on your own, and being comfortable with yourself and your thoughts, and not have anyone always in your ear or anyone influencing or judging your, the things that you do or the things that you say, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There is beauty in being alone, and I feel like society sees that. As something that's so bad but it's really not because why like there's a difference between being alone and a difference between being lonely and I am not lonely I'm just alone and I'm totally okay with that I'm so comfortable in my skin I'm comfortable with who I am I don't need validation from other people like I'm good <sighs> clearly my camera doesn't want me to be great because it either keeps turning off because of the battery or because the memory card is full and I feel like Ray J with this hat because every time I come back on to finish the clip the hat is here is here is here like <laughs> anyways let me make sure it's I hope it's on right is it on right is it on right okay <laughs> to wrap up this video I just want to say thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey if you haven't watched the video that i posted when i first moved into this apartment you should totally watch it don't mind rico in the background making noise for attention i'll be sure to link the video in the description below so you guys can watch it if you're not subscribed to my channel you should totally subscribe to my channel because now that i'm almost done decorating my apartment i will be uploading a lot more home decor hauls and stuff like that and i can't wait to show you guys more about my home decorating process with my interior decorator julie and yeah i'm just so excited so make sure you subscribe to my channel and for those of you that are watching that are maybe thinking about moving on your own and you're like oh i don't know i just like i'm scared i'm nervous i don't know if i'm girl if i can do it you can do it and for those of you who maybe are married and have kids and like there's just really no possible way that you can live on your own um i encourage you to connect with yourself in a more intimate way you know um, find new hobbies try new things like get out of the house and do something for you do something for you in a way that's that's going to help you get to know yourself in a more intimate way and do things alone for once it's okay to be alone it does not mean that you're lonely so anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video i love you all and i'll see you next week right here on my channel bye